Hello and welcome to another Scardcast Battle Report. Today, the Orcs face the Drukhari in this ITC competitive uh, game. So let's see what the Greenskins will do as they wait for the Prophet of the War to grace the tabletop. Let's begin. Hello and welcome to another Scardcast Battle Report. I'm here with Hamza. Hi. Hello, Hamza. Thanks for coming down. He's one of the competitive players of the Ontario region. Semi-competitive. Semi-competitive. <laughs> he plays Grey Knights. And, yeah. and Knights. And Orcs. And Custodes. And Necrons. And Necrons. And, and today, though... Tyranids. No, you didn't bring your Tyranids. I didn't today. bring Tyranids. No. You brought your green skins. <laughs> wow. You can feel the green oozing out of the pre release section of the GW Can't website. Gazgul is coming soon. Oh, man. I but can't you're wait. more excited about the Grot. I'm, of course, I lead the revolution of an army called the Grot Revolution of Orchimedes. You did bring a lot of Grots. There's a lot of Grots. There's about 145 in the list. Oh. Oh. 120 oh. on the field, 25 that man guns. Yep. And then obviously I have the Red Gobbo. He's the not Red the Gobbo. Gobbo. He's, he's on his big gun. We'll get to that yeah. in a second. But it, we are playing an ITC battle report. It is a, a bite-sized bat rep. So we'll be talking more about tactics, movement, um, and that sort of thing, other than like every single dice roll. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, who do you think is going to be your MVP? Honestly, I think it's going to be Captain Badrook because he's the free Buddha king. And if I. Pirates! Die, yeah, pirate! I, Pirates! He's my hired gun. I'm the pirate. <laughs> I am the pirate king. That's right. Well, let's get I am to. the captain. Oh, yeah. Uh, he is the captain now. Okay, folks, let's get to the battle report. Enjoy! And here we have 2,000 points of green skins, which is. Uh, a lot of them. So, Hamza, take it away. What have you brought to face the pointy elves? I have got a brigade and two battalions. In the brigade, I got three shock attack guns as the HQs. Yep. I got all Grot Oilers with them and 60 Grots to fill up the troops. Yep. Then I got a run, not a run turret. Well, actually, I do have a run turret. He's a non force organization slot. Then a mech, a cheap elite. A pain boy to give everyone a six up feel no pain. And the unit of 15 tank busters, which is just kind of wrapped all around here. And accompanying them is four lovely bomb squigs. Yep. Um, that's the elites. Then in the fast attack, I just got three death copters. Uh, it's the one thing that's not wig. They just got big shooters instead of big rockets on them. Yep. And the cheapo, last... Cheapo, cheapo, cheapo. Oh, 30 point fast attack? <laughs> that's the best fast attack ever. With one of the best outflanking rules in the game. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> but behind enemy lines now. Yep. And uh, then the heavy supports, I got 15 Ludas. I got nine makeshift Ludas over here. Kind of like big shoot-up boys. What's the clan? They're all bad moons. Except for one betrayer, which is this weird boy who leads one of the second battalions there. He's got a thinking cap, which is a relic. Which is only available to uh, blood axes, so it makes this regiment not benefit from any culture. But they're grots and two weird boys, which don't get anything, which gives them a six-up command point refund. And uh, both powers on weird boys are the jump that I got Captain Badrook with an ammo runt, a big mech with the force field, which just came out in chapter proof 2019 with a grot oiler. Yep. And with them is 30 more grots. And in the last place is five smasher guns. We got a unit of two, a unit of two, and one man unit, which is led by the Red Gobbo himself. The Red Gobbo himself, standing atop his smasher gun. Oh, yeah. Looking to bring down all the tides of glory on the enemy, <laughs> which is super exciting. So they're all bad moons. Keeps it really simple. Yeah. Um, which is interesting, because normally people go for the Death Skull... The Death Skulls uh, shock attack guns. I roll so many ones that it's not even funny, so rerolling one of them is not enough for me. <laughs> you, do, you need to reroll all your ones exactly. to hit, not just one to hit. You got it, man. Fair enough, fair enough, that makes sense. Okay, so with that, let's dive in. And here we have 2,000 points of Drukhari. I've switched it up a little bit because I'm testing out some new concepts, which is really cool. So I hope you enjoy. Mainly focused around dark Technomancer Venoms, as you can see. They're no longer Cabal of the Black Heart. So we have a dark Technomancer Vanguard detachment with, of course, my 15 trusty, trusty Mandrakes. 
and two homunculi with hex rifles. I have six Venoms in this detachment, and you say, hey, wait, those are five uh, units, the six Venoms. Well, I also brought two Talos with chain flails, macro scalpels, and twin hair wire rifles. So that's six choices to six dedicated transports. Four of them do have double cannons, which is something I haven't done in a very long time, but I am uh, trying to maximize on the amount of shots I can get from them. Then I have a battalion detachment of Prophets of Flesh with Uri and Rakarth himself, a homunculus with another hex rifle and a flesh gauntlet, a unit of 10 racks with a venom blade, an also factor, and eight more racks, and then two units of five racks. These are, of course, Prophets of Flesh, so all the good stuff that comes with them. Last but not least, a Cabal the Black Heart Battalion with Drazar the Master of Blades, Archon Skyru with a Blast Pistol and his trusty, trusty Husk Blade, three units of Cabalite Warriors with Blasters, and two Void Raven Bombers with Lances, Missiles, and their trusty, trusty Bomb. And this is 2,000 points on the nose. Yeah. We're here after deployment. I am the Defender. I chose this deployment because I thought it'd be interesting to try it. Or Hammer and Anvil. He has lots of shooting. Hammer and Anvil gives him lots of shots. I kind of wanted to be able to get nice and stuck into combat as quickly as possible. Gets a whole bunch of grunts. So hopefully that pays off. Uh, he did deploy big unit of 15 looters. Grunts, grunts, grunts. Uh, weird boy. Smasher, smasher. Uh, mech. Uh, bad ruck, grots, grots, shock attack gun, relic shock attack gun, smasher, smasher, um, another weird boy, custom force field, um, runt herder, dock, grots, 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 <laughs> another smasher, uh, shock attack gun, grots, then he's put his three sh uh, copters in outflank and he has paid four CP to put his nine man looters and his 15 tank busters in deep strike, uh, ready to do some shenanigans. He is going to go first. He has 19 CPs. I have 13 CPs. And I have deployed as such. It is um, Crucible of Champions, if you haven't noticed. So five objectives. Bonuses to get characters um, on three different objectives. So that's pretty cool. I've deployed one Hemonculus, giving all these Venoms plus one toughness. Uh, Rax, Warriors, Rax, Warriors, Warriors. Archon Scarry by himself in a Venom. Risky, but hopefully it'll be worth it for the bonus. Uh, Void Raven Bomber, Void Raven Bomber. Hemogulus with a Hex Rifle, giving his Talos plus one toughness. Urian and the Vexator Mask, giving the other Rax plus one toughness. Drazar, sitting back here, because he loves being pretty. Five units of Mandrakes in Deep Strike Reserve. And with that, there's no point to being shy. Let's dive right in to the battle. Let us know what you think down below. How would you face all this shooting from the Orcs? And what would you hope for as well? Okay, let's begin. Oh, before that is. So I have Dark, dark Technomancers and Master of Mutagens, which helps all my Venoms basically uh, wound extra. Basically, you don't have to roll to wound if I roll a six to hit on their poison weapons. Also in combat for like my homunculuses and stuff, which is pretty snazzy. Let's begin, Hamza. Have fun. After turn one movement, the orcs have decided to essentially move up and threaten the board, trying to zone out as much as they can. He's um, moved some of his characters up front here. Eh, okay, risky play, but he does have a lot of grots to potentially do some grot shielding. He wants to get into uh, threat range. He's probably going to try and take out either planes or a couple of venom. So we'll see what he decides to do with his shooting. Uh, he can't really go for the bonus this turn without overexposing characters, which is... Good for me, which means I can try get the bonus like unopposed next turn. However, you know, that's, I'm going to need to play for the bonus and whatnot to make up for the fact that his, I'm not going to really be able to stop his damage output until I clear a lot of these grots. And he has a lot of his damage output still in deep strike with his tank busters and his looters. Like he doesn't care if he loses a bunch of stuff on the first couple of turns. Cause when his looters and stuff come in from reserve, that's when he starts really picking up the pace of the game. And then of course, shock attack guns can go crazy at any point in time. So, so, uh, so we'll see how that goes. With that though, um, secondaries for the orcs, a big game hunter. Um, he's also taken behind enemy lines, so he wants to try get behind my line. 
and old school. So he's trying to get a kill on this first turn. It shouldn't be that hard. He's trying to kill Archon Skari, and uh, he's trying to hold an objective at the end of the game, or be in my line at the end of the game, and kill something in the last battle round played as well. My secondary is a Reaper. I did take Reaper. I took Headhunter because I wanted to kill some characters. And the last one I took is Recon because if I if you're Eldar and not taking Recon, something is wrong with your head. Okay, let's begin the shooting. The Orc shooting did what Orc shooting does and sometimes is amazing and sometimes... <laughs> wah, 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 and that was one of these turns. So big shock attack gun... Uh, put three, four wounds on the void, on the void raven, even after shooting twice and more dacking. So I got really lucky there. <laughs> then the other shock attack gun put another four wounds onto it. So I got lucky there. <laughs> and then these guys put two wounds onto it. <laughs> so I got lucky there. <laughs> Big with this guy there. And then they all shoot up the, the, uh, the racks and he made me take six saves, five, four ups and one fell down. So he's killed two from that unit from a variety of different things. And not then, even enough for morale. Not even enough for morale. And then all of the big mech guns shot at that guy. He has taken nine wounds. He has three left, but he oh is alive. And I have prevented a first turn kill. I feel like if he would just shot at my venoms, that would have probably been an easier kill there. He would have definitely gotten a kill because they only have six wounds each and no feel, no pain. Okay, so plan saturate the board worked. And now on to first turn. I did deny the first strike, which is amazing. So now we'll kind of go from there because I know that he has a ton of stuff in deep strike and in reserve, which is pretty much where orcs win the game is in the mid to late because they win the war of attrition. <laughs> so let's see what I can do as we move on to the um, turn one for the Drukari. I should, I should also probably say that he tried to shoot his looters twice and I let him shoot the shock attack on twice. And then when he decided to shoot his looters twice, I vected it. So. You know, so he's down to 15 command points. I'm down to 10 command points. No, to 9 command points. No, 10. Because I, I totally did steal one of his. Yeah, you did. So I went up to 14, spent 4. Still have 10 command points, but that was a well-placed Vect to make sure those looters just to silence their guns. Vect had a plan. <laughs> On to turn 1. End of turn 1 movement for the Drukari. So because the orcs didn't get a kill, I have a chance to try and get kill more, hold more. Uh, my ploy to get the bonus didn't work because Archon Scar rerolled his one inch advance into a one. So he was literally like a fraction of an inch shy of that objective. And I can't fire and fade him because I had to advance him, which is a shame. If not, he would have get, I should have done the one CP thing and just moved him up, fire and faded to guarantee it. But I went for the gamble. It did not work. So I've put, I've zoned out the backboard. So I have five. One Hemoculus with Hex Rifle, Urien, Hemoculus with Hex Rifle. My Void Raven Bomber that's fully wounded moved up here. These Talus have moved up here. They're going to fire and fade and essentially take this section of the table to zone out this part of the board. And then I've zoned out this entire part of the table as well. Drazar, the Hemoculus with Vexing Mask, and five racks have moved up to the middle of the table, as well as all my Venoms have essentially just piled up, except for that one who's in the corner over there. So my game plan is this. I want to try and kill the Pain Boy. Because he gives six up fiona pain to everybody. So taking him out will allow me to not have to worry about random grots surviving later in the game when he has like 300 models. And, uh, and then trying to just get onto the table here and create like a little base of operations where I can kind of push into his grot mansion of doom. Um, I did bomb this unit of grots with my wounded bomber. I did kill five of the 10 grots. Uh, so my aim is just to shoot them off or kill them off and just take that objective and get a kill easily. As well as now he can shoot into the looters if he wants to as well. Which is awesome. You know, softening them up a little bit always helps. He did zone out the back of the board quite well, so I couldn't fly over. If not, I would have probably flown over, bombed this uh, unit of grots that's screening that mech gun, and tried to snipe that mech gun from existence. Which would have been amazing, because mech guns are really dangerous. And I got off lightly one time, but that doesn't mean that's going to happen well, again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, at the end of the turn, I'm spending two command points, and this entire unit of uh, this entire unit of racks is disappearing from the table. And he um, left me a nice little pocket right right in the corner here. Boop, boop. So they're just going to pop up here at full strength and try and tie up those looters. At least that's the plan. Because if they do, that would be amazing. Even though they can still do jump and stuff. But then having 10 racks on your flank just kind of like be a nuisance is, is awesome. No, that's great. Can't be upset. End of turn one for the Drukari. 
So I have... Uh, so he's facing that way. I was able to zone out most of the table. They did make the charge. I did kill eight. They lost four in combat. I owe you a morale, by the way, um, for them as well. Uh, they are leaves you eight, and they plus four, they're two. So that's fine. So they, none of them run. I did kill half the grots. Yeah. But more than half the grots. Because I literally did like four wounds, five wounds, four wounds, three wounds, seven wounds, like on a bunch of different grots. And then they just all failed morale and ran away. Like I was trying to just keep a few with a couple of models left so I have kills later in the game. But hey, if you can uh, if you can go straight for uh, for your Reaper right away, <laughs> might as well, right? I did kill the, the, the Mad Doc. Was that a mistake on your part or did you expect him to die? Uh, I wanted him to run up to objective three. Oh, okay. So, but, um, yeah. so this, so you were prepping him for th- to turn two to be yeah. able to get him on there for the bonus. He just didn't anticipate all that quick movement by the venom. So the venoms got up. I was able to kill the one unit of grots that was close by, and then the snipers, the hex rifles with uh, dark techno monsters, did two damage. Then I did the one hex rifle with no deck techno monsters. Do another. He had one left. So that infantry unit inside that venom shot him to death so i was able to get a headhunter point which was good i got first strike i got hold more kill more and i got a recon point as well so okay so with that we're moving into turn two i did zone out most of the table which means um his his big units basically end up popping up like right here because there's nowhere else you can put them on the table. I've used this to zone out nine. I've used these guys to zone out up to here. This unit zones out this way, this way. This Void Raven zone out that way, that way. Then you've got 18 inches in between all these different units. So all this is zoned out safely. And then nine, nine. And then basically he's got from nine inches this way all the way to that Void Raven bomber, essentially. So that's that's the area that I've given him to deep strike, which is good. It also denies him behind enemy lines on the first turn. But there's still lots of game to go, as, you know, he's got lots of mortal wound shenanigans with... Uh, and his uh, the tank buses are probably going to be the biggest pain in the butt. And he still has a bunch of command points. And I only have five now, because I had to use quite a few. But I did kill a lot of the, the mech guns as well, so... Okay, here's hoping, and I still have my Mandrix in Deep Strike as well, which can be the ace in the hole. Okay, on to turn two. End of Orcish turn two movements. So he has brought his tank busters back here with some bomb squigs. He can't really use the bomb squigs against fly because they can't hit things that fly. So he's using them to zone, which is awesome. Also extra wounds for when I shoot them. Uh, then he also does, you can kill them, right, as wounds? Yes. Yes. Nine looters coming into here. So he's got, he's looking at these venoms being like, they have to die. He's moved, uh, grots up. He's essentially going to be charging in and doing a bunch of shenanigans to take that objective over there. Other than that, he kind of moved, uh, him out of combat. He moved, uh, the captain back this way to snaz gun drazar and uh, we're moving into the psychic phase but his plan is to try and clear as much of your stuff that i have in his face as possible at this point and try and get as many points as possible hold for a couple of turns and then push and hope that the war of attrition means that he can then take the middle of the board and flip the game into his favor he is on the back foot but that's why he's playing defensive and he's not getting too aggressive he's going to focus on the things he can kill and essentially try to get localized superiority so here he's going to try to kill the venom and drazar and then potentially kill some of these racks and maybe the homunculus and then over here he's got three venoms and a unit inside that he can potentially kill he still has a lot of shooting because these shock attack guns are the main killers they have a lot they do a lot of work so if they go off they go off so um and of course the morale allowed them to stick, get out of combat. And he's got one weird boy over here. He's probably going to try to zap them and then maybe try and kill them as well. Okay, so with that, we're moving into turn two for the Orcses. End of turn two, and all the Venoms have died. Apparently, the uh, Orcs found their guns. The tank busters. <laughs> tank busters came in, looters came in, shock attack gun actually did well. One, two, three, four, five, six Venoms, all dead. Also, Drazar died because Mr. Snazgun did five wounds, and that Venom exploded and did the last wound to Drazar. That was bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so all the loot, uh, looters, he still has the, the three copters in Deep Strike. Uh, and then we have, I lost two guys from that squad, and then I did lose another rack from there. However, he charged in with the Ludas to try and do a couple more dam- wounds damage. I, however, I did kill the Ludas. So he's killed seven things in my turn. I've killed one thing in his turn. So I need to kill six things in this turn to stop him from getting kill more, which is nigh impossible. I can definitely get the hold more because he only has one objective. However, I'm going to try and get the bonus point this turn 
by essentially sacrificing my homunculus and running him up there. He's which like I, a shock attack guy, don't we? Yeah, yeah, he's that's fine. Feel it. Uh, he he ignores Overwatch, so it's all good. <laughs> oh, no. He can just run in. Oh, no. So if I get that bonus point this turn, that'd be great. That just gives me like a little bit of extra wiggle room, makes up for the not kill more. I still have to worry about those uh, death copters coming in. If I keep my screen as is, what it'll, it'll allow me to. Um, it will allow me to uh, stop him from getting behind enemy lines, so he can max it out um, or get two points next turn if he gets all three of them behind my lines. However, I can also get recon for two points, so I'm pretty excited about that as well. Okay, so let's see what happens, and uh, we'll see what happens to that Void Raven too, because he's he's cast to do something shenaniganery to get around there. Fair enough. Let's move on to the next turn. End of Dark Eldar turn two. Wow, what a bloodbath it has been. I did kill that weird boy over there in combat. I uh, only put four wounds. He's got, what, six wounds in total? Yes, the uh, I put four wounds on the captain because he's got a three-up save and he's sitting in the crater. So I did do quite a lot of shooting, and I he has two <laughs> wounds left because I had two-up save. Um, I did kill the Super Shock Attack Gun mech with uh, Dark Techno Monster Hex Rifles and a bunch of uh, shooting from the... So good. He did shooting combat so and got strength five, five and, like, well, he, he rolled snake eyes for shots and then re-rolled it and killed three of them yeah. because he can shoot in death, which is pretty cool, actually. And then uh, sporadic shooting, I killed the run turder, uh, I killed the mech, I killed another weird boy, maxing out my headhunter, and I yeah. killed three of those ludas just to bring him down to six, a little bit less uh, damage-y in total. The first you didn't kill Grotz. I didn't kill any Grotz because I needed, like, you he gave me a whole bunch of characters, so I needed to focus on them for secondary points. He did fail his charge. He rolled uh, three and then Snake Eyes. <laughs> so he literally failed, so I didn't get the bonus point this turn again. He's a sad boy. But that's okay. So hopefully he can just sit there and take all the shooting and all the little bomb squigs if the bomb squigs can, can get to him and stuff. To Drazar? Yeah, Drazar died, so let's see if he can survive. Um, other than that, I did move this guy that way to try and get me the bonus that way. He does have the jump if he wants to use it. Slash, uh, the three copters, which can't come on on this side, can come on on this side if they want. Okay, other than that, let's move on to the turn three. Here we are after movement of turn three. Yes, the bonus has been given. <laughs> They're hiding back here. Two uh, bonuses there, trying to hide so I can't like come in and charge him with a uh, hemoculus. Uh, over here we have the tank buster state. Uh, the tank buster did kind of move. He's gonna basically release the beasts or whatever uh, if he can. Hounds. He was trying to. He was trying to kill him. So you can you can only shoot the hounds at a legitimate target, correct? Uh, they can eighteen inches of one guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So at a legitimate target, however, yeah, like it's a shooting attack. Yeah. So he can took them. He tried to smite over here. Rolled a five and a one. Tried to reroll the one. So that I, I, it'd be hard for me to deny. Yeah. Rerolled it into one. I was able to stop it. And then the helm of spite here did two wounds. He almost made him so explode. Close. If he would have exploded, he dies. And then the shark attacking us to shoot. So I was, whew, it was close. Uh, <laughs> shark so attack gun didn't shoot him with a pistol or shot him, but didn't do anything. And then tank buses have just, uh, decided to, do, um, <laughs> kind of fives. Of yeah, fives are shooting. And of course, he's got lines after lines after lines after lines after lines of grunts, <laughs> which is super exciting. Oh, and then, uh, the two, the two compadres coming up to the middle of the table. The champions, there. I'm telling you, the MVP. <laughs> MVP, he's taking two wounds. He has one wound left. Uh, so he has two wounds left. He has one wound left. And then he is completely fine, Mr. Custom Force Field. Yeah. And that's that. Okay. On to the shooting phase for the Orcses. End of battle round number three. Uh, sorry, no. End of Orc turn three. So because that rack survived from being smited and stuff. That means that the tank buses didn't really do anything. They just super murdered this plane over here. And then these looters uh, shot some, they shot here and there. They kind of split their shots. And then over here we had some combats. He killed three of these cavalry warriors and three of these uh, mandrakes as well. And then they shot everything into that. And I made... So many six up female things. <laughs> so it was great. So he's still alive, which is awesome. And then that Rex survived combat and then murdered the, the weird boy. So there's no de jumps anymore. Um, I've maxed out my headhunter. You killed one thing. There's two things. You two. killed him and him. And I've already killed one for the battle round, which is that guy. So I need to kill two. two things to get kill more, which means I can go for kill, kill, kill more. And I'm in a position to get the bonus finally. 
which I think would be hard for the Orcs to come back from as we move in later in the game. And then I still have a bomb on him, and I think those tank busters go and get bombed. Go and get bombed. <laughs> End of turn three. So I did get kill, kill more, hold, hold more bonus this time. So I got Urian, my Archon, and he fired and faded onto that objective. I killed both of the characters here. I killed three more units. Oh no, two more units of Grotz. No, five units of Grotz. And then he lived with one after morale. They're fine. I killed the Ludas. And then there are still 14 tank busters left. This rack is still in combat with the shock attacker. <laughs> the fucking... <laughs> and then this, uh, this, um, Hemonculus has tied up both of those cannon there. And then the racks tried to re-rack. They used Black Cornucopians again to get over there. They did fail their charge and they lost three models. Three, uh, three to uh, Overwatch. The Talos started over here. They moved up within 24 of this um, uh, copter. Uh, killed the copter. And then made an Aiden's charge into the captain. And then after Archon Scar killed the captain in combat, they were able to pile in and consolidate even closer. So they started there, and look at that distance with a good charge, and then pile in consolidate. It's crazy how fast you can make units move if they're in the right position. And I did um, forget that I had a unit of Cabalites back there. Tisk tisk. Um, okay, with that, we're moving on to turn four for the Orcs. It is looking grim for the Orcs, so we'll see what happens. Uh, with the Tank Busters oh, oh, being oh. like, we're going to kill everything. He still has two CP to either super smash or to shoot twice, essentially. And I have three CP left because I had to use a Fire and Fade and then the Black Corner Copians. Those guys have been coming back twice already, so <laughs> worth their weight dying. in gold. <laughs> I love it. Okay, with that, I've maxed out all my secondaries. Moving on to turn numero cuatro. Okay, so end of turn four. Uh, he didn't move them because he just wants behind me lines. Doesn't want to give me any kills with them, so he's just hiding them. So they're going to be there. They're and then sneaky. they're also line breaker and potentially an objective at the end of the game or a last strike. So he doesn't want to use them too, too aggressively. He did fall back with the yellow. He fell back with him. The tank busters used one CP to use grenades. So they grenaded my Void Raven to death and they grenaded my Hemonculus to death. I had the no overwatch. No more. No more. <laughs> so he's killed them dead. Uh, however, all my Mandrakes is still alive. He has killed two things this turn, which means... If I get three kills, I get kill more kill. Yeah, all that stuff again, which is crazy. I just have to kill a grot, some grots, and then some stuff. So, yeah, it's looking really good for the Dark Eldar this time. I don't think the Orcs can get back in time because it is turn four already. But we'll see. Hans is fighting for every point, tooth every point. and nail. Every point counts. So end of battle round number four, and that seems to be the decisive blow that the Drukari needed to do on the green skins. Uh, they charged into the grot and killed it. Uh, I did shoot the tank buses off the board. I also shot the one mech gun and the other shock attack and off the table. And then I charged the two mandrakes into the four grots that were left here. And the grots shot the mandrakes to death, which was very surprising. So I had to use this five-man squad to kill those mandrakes. And then the racks and this unit of mandrakes killed the last shock attack gun. While the talos charged into the last cannon and kill the cannon off as well yeah. so i will get kill hold kill more hold more bonus for turn four and with that i believe we will call it yes that will be a game hamza okay so make sure you stay tuned for the after action report and that is game oh uh, the orcs Went down. The orcs got orked. I they take have. many of them back to the yes. dark city for playthings. He took my teeth. I thought I wanted play his. Playthings. <laughs> Orion is very happy. He was sitting in that back objective the whole game, yep. just watching things happen. Got so just many like, bonus points. I know. <laughs> really? So yeah, good. Yeah, I had lots of characters. Um, okay, so from your perspective, uh, who was your like MVP in terms of like, what do you think you did well this game? Uh, I think I played pretty well with my tank busters. That was just my main thing. Uh, I think we kind of talked about how I should have maybe put them in on the table instead of in reserve. Yep. And that would have maybe given me that first turn punch I was looking for because I didn't get a kill one. I didn't yep. get my first strike. And uh, I didn't really get too much opportunity to kind of take over the board, which I think if I moved in advanced grots up and then put tank busters behind them and then banked on them rather than Ludas, yep. I think that could have rewarded me a little bit better because I think my Ludas number of shots 
kind of backfired. I think the tank busters would have been key because if you would have said jump the tank busters up or exactly, whatever, you yeah. could have probably killed all my venoms yeah, in that first that's turn. What I was thinking. Killing all the venoms, dead, yeah. and then I don't have that mobility and I yeah. basically am on the back foot for the rest of the game. That's what I wanted to do is take the board control away because usually my army does pretty well. And the other way I was thinking of actually doing that was actually giving you first. Yep. But I was really contemplating on rolling a bad deployment, which was Dawn of War I didn't want. You didn't want that I Dawn didn't want because Ooh. it lets you go in with every venom right away on every objective. I don't want to take recon. I, behind enemy lines gets really hard to do because you saw... It's like really tiny. It's a tiny little zone, yeah. right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I wanted Hammer and Animal, which you said would have been a good one for you, which I thought would have been good for me because... I would have had that bigger gap. You know? It's actually it, I, when I was when I was considering deployments as the yeah. defender, and you made me defender, so I was able to roll two. Yeah. And I, I rolled hammer anvil or pointy dawn of war. Yeah, and it's one of the things you have to like understand. Like I knew that dawn of it would dawn of war. Sorry, hammer and anvil would have given me more stuff to hide behind. I, I would have had I, like more terrain to hide behind or yeah. whatever, which would have been good in terms of mitigating your shooting. Yep. However, mid to late game, it would have just meant that I had to go twice as far to That's get awesome. to your shock attack and stuff. So I was like, you know what? He's going to go first. He's going to shoot me a bunch. I need to just like pucker down yep. and hope that you don't do da- as much damage and luckily enough that's kind of what happened on your first shooting phase i think your overcommitment really did pay off in the long run because like in our previous game we played back at stutter scrub if you guys i think i don't stutter know scrub, that. yeah that was a while ago but it uh, was very similar situation where i put stuff in reserve and i couldn't get the positioning i wanted with the units yeah in this situation i got tank busters to be in the position i wanted but like you said they killed the units a little too late yeah they cleared six venoms but if would, I did that on the first turn, mm-hmm. I, that would have been 60 more Gretchen that I could have had and used. Yeah, because I did kill all those Grots with just the Venoms, Venoms. essentially. Yeah. And then like just popped all those Gretchen. By the way, that Craft World. E, the Obsession. That yeah, was so good. So that good. Obsession was so good. That was Two amazing. damage, plus one to wound on all those Venoms. My feel no pains were mitigated. Once you pretty much took out the pain mode, but like the Void Shield was essentially useless too. It was great. Because everything I went through was auto hit, auto wound, right? It was great. Well, not auto hit, but yes, like on oh, a yeah, six. On the high hit of six. But yeah, yeah. So wounding on threes though with poison is amazing oh, so good. and two damage really helps so against funeral pain primaris marines i'm looking at you oh watch you i'm watching <laughs> <laughs> looking at you other than that hamza thanks for coming down thank you me personally i think that i was good at getting aggressive in the middle of the board and i kind of forced you into the defensive right off the bat yeah and i will say the clutch like luck thing for me was that uh was able for me to tie up and kill most of your ludas oh, on that flank yep with that with that long bomb rack who, charge who rolls a six and a one re-rolls the one into a six me like apparently yeah, my racks had, right? you know but only the racks on a first turn charge had they failed that you would have had 15 looters again Couldn't so that more. first turn not only would have you killed all my venoms you didn't shoot at them at all because you were afraid mm-hmm. i was gonna pull right mm-hmm. no yeah, so i true. needed to make that charge that was yeah. like a gamble well and that gamble really paid well off done. okay well i hope you guys enjoyed it let us know what you thought of the game down below meaning like scary op or orcs need a buff um yeah yeah gas gold gas gold or a little two up and vulnerable save grub the Bakari, that's the one we yeah. need to take. <laughs> Thanks for coming down to the studio. Thank you. I'm Scario, grateful host. This is Hamza. Signing off until next time. And thanks a lot to all the Patreons who support the channel. If you want to become a denizen, check the link down below. Okay. Other than that, bye. bye. <laughs>